Hiya friends, it's Bill and you're watching Bill's Box of Sound. And this video is number seven in a series of Frank Zappa posthumous CD releases. Now, we're getting close here. We're getting up to all these box sets that have been coming out lately since 2018. We're going to be going into release number 111 the Roxy performances. And this is a big one. It's a special one. So I'm going to have to treat this one in a different way. Recorded in 1973 and released in 1974, Roxy and Elsewhere has always been one of my favorite Zappa albums and one of my favorite albums of all time. Now, <clears throat> the original CD that came out was a Barking Pumpkin CD that came out via Capitol Records and had a different version of the song Cheapness. If you are familiar with the version that's on the original vinyl version of Roxy and Elsewhere, this one's a little bit different, but not completely essential. But then it came out again via Ryko Disc, and in 2012 it came out on the Universal Music Enterprises through Zappa Records. And this, I really do not like this, this label. Um, it had the original mix of everything on here and um, not a bad representation of Roxy and elsewhere. But then later on, we got the whole Roxy by Proxy thing, which I believe I talked about in the previous uh, videos, uh, this one give you a glimpse into the background of uh, the raw recordings of the Roxy Theater recordings and what was in store. And back in 2000, we had a teaser about this Roxy movie that Frank was trying to make. And of course, in the year of 2015, finally came out with the actual movie. Oh, this is such a treasure trove of stuff. And an even more detailed glimpse of everything that went in to the Roxy and Elsewhere album. What else could there possibly be? Well, here it is. The box set. Zappa, Mothers, the Roxy Performances. I never did a proper review of this, but I'm going to do it right now. Okay, here it is, the box set. It's in a clamshell box. Little Zappa mustache there. And all the stuff there. Open it up, and it's got seven CDs. Here's the first one. Here is the second one. Here is the third one. Here is the fourth one. Here is number five. Here is number six, and here is number seven. And of course, there is a booklet with lots and lots of liner notes. You got Vaultmeister Joe Travers chiming in. The credits, the details of the discs, hello Chester, talking about the filming, these liner notes were done by Vaultmeister Joe Travers, then we've got En route to the Roxy Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California. 
These were written by Jen Jewel Brown. And then there's another bit of liner note mint. Put together by Dave Alvin of the Blasters, written in 2017. Also some other things. So let's go through this disc by disc, shall we? Okay, disc one and the first track of disc two has the first show which took place on December 9th, 1973. And um, what's in this box is almost all of the performances that were used for the assemblage of the Roxy and Elsewhere double album. There are some performances that, uh, are, that are on the album that are not in here, but this gives you a really excellent x-ray into how that album was pieced together and what kind of a madman genius Frank was in how he put these things together. Because you go from one show to another and all over the place, but these shows were performed in front of people and they were performed entertainingly and it's great music. Now, there's one really cool thing and it's say, uh, da, 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 da. I think it's in um, Tamershi Duween or is it Big Swifty? No, it's a, a Tamershi a, a, a Duween. Um, there's this instrumental part where uh, Napoleon Murphy Brock is doing a flute solo and you hear backwards reverb. Now, that's impossible in real life. So what Frank must have done with these tapes is he must have taken the tape, turned it around, found that track, printed some reverb on it, and then recorded that onto another track. So then when he played it back the right way, the reverb would predate the flute note by about half a second or so and just kind of slide it in. Things you can't do live, but you can do with tape. Now the rest of disc two has show two from December 9th, 1973. Then that goes into disc three. And you know, I had heard or read things about how these shows were structured, that they do the same set list on every show. Uh, there's similar set lists, but everything's different. Every show is different. There are different highlights and all sorts of instrumental changes and improvisations and just surprises. I, I cannot say enough about how much this boxed set gives you in just a, a, an amazing amount of, uh, of Frank Zappa goodness. Disc three goes to December 10th, 1973, show number one. And then we go into show four, I'm sorry, disc four, which goes through the end of that. And then show two of December 10th, Disc five goes to the end of that show. And then as if that weren't enough, and by gosh, don't you think it ought to be? Uh, they've got the bonus section. They've got a re rehearsal tapes from December 10th. They've got uh, an unreleased track of that arrogant Dick Nixon. And they've also got a studio recording session that was put onto the end of these tapes. And... Uh, then on the last disc, disc seven, there is a December 8th sound check for film sound. They were getting ready, ready for this film, getting all, of, all the preparations in there, and they recorded that as well. And when you listen to all of these, as entertaining as they are by themselves, you can tell, if you're really familiar with the Roxy and Elsewhere album, 
how he took this little bit from here and put it over here and this little bit from here and put it over there and assembled this whole huge cut from different performances of this going back and forth. If you have this album, this box set, you also need to have the original Roxy and Elsewhere album, either on LP or CD. Now, nowadays they're putting out these mega vinyl box sets. There's like a 17 record uh, Prince uh, box set. There's a Lee Morgan Live at the Lighthouse 12 LP box set. I doubt seriously that they'd put something out uh, uh, with this. Um, the CD format really lends itself to this kind of presentation. Uh, so if you got to listen to vinyl, listen to the original album. But if you want to get really deep into what made Roxy, Roxy, this release, number 111, which was released on... February the 2nd, 2018. This is one smoking box set. And as I make this video on August the 23rd, 2021, 20, uh, uh, this is only 45 bucks on Amazon. That's less than $10 a CD. Come on. Pause this video if you haven't gotten this already. Go hit the buy button, then come back, and we'll move on towards the next posthumous release. Next, in March of 2019, this box came out. Yes, that's right. The 40th anniversary of Zappa in New York. And if you're a, if, if you're a fan of uh, the videos put out by Calvin Wazoo, who has been doing like Zappa one album at a time reviews, you'll see this in a lot of his videos. And that lucky bastard, he's got a copy of the original Zappa in New York album that has Punky's Whips on it. So if you're familiar with this album, you know how freaking rare it is. So he definitely gets a win on that. And uh, by the way, if you haven't watched Calvin Wazoo's channel, check him out. Uh, he's pretty good. He knows his stuff. And uh, he has a lot of insight about Zappa from his own point of view that is very interesting. But let's talk about Zappa in New York, the 40th anniversary CD boxed set. Because there is the original vinyl version that came out, a two-record set. And then... At the same time that this came out was the release of a three-record set for the 40th anniversary. Really nice packaging. If you're into vinyl, you want to get this. But if you're a Zappa completist, you got to get all of this stuff. <laughs> so, um, now, the album was release number 23, but this box set is release number 112, okay? It had been released on CD twice previously, all with the same digital remixes on Barking Pumpkin, which looked like this. Uh, here, getting some reruns here. And then on Ryko Disc, which looked like that. And then there's the universal one, which I don't have because it's the exact same thing as the other ones. So let's venture into this box and see what's inside. Okay, this thing opens up. Ah, let me do it carefully here. To reveal a metal box. No, it's not Public Image Limited. It's Frank. It's got a real metal box. Zappa Records. And when you pull it open, you've got 
a wonderful booklet. It's almost like a practical book. It's got a lot of the graphics from the record and other things, as well as extra liner notes. And then it's got a replica Ticketron ticket of the shows in New York. And then it's got your CDs. Disc number one. Disc number two. Disc number three. Disc number four. And with a uh, number five. Bonus vault content. Yes. The first CD has the original 1977 vinyl mix from beginning to end without Punky's Whips. Punky's Whips was supposed to be was supposed to be at the end of side one, uh, which would have made it like a 20 minute side. But um, it was yanked off of the album at the last minute. Frank had a release from Punky Meadows, who the song was about in a jesting way, uh, to release this song. But Warner Brothers, in their immense knowledge and supreme intelligence, said, we don't care. This is salacious material, and we're going to get sued if we release it. So they yanked it off. It exists on a few cassettes and LPs um, in Europe and some other countries. But uh, in America, it never came out like that. But just the same, this first disc has the um, orig original American 1977 vinyl mix lovingly transferred for digital. Second uh, uh, disc of the... Uh, 40th Anniversary Deluxe Edition, has bonus concert performances, part one, disc three, part two, disc four, part four. And there's lots of great performances. Uh, people from the Saturday Night Live band uh, in, a, in on this. Uh, some, some great music. Music from 1977 and it's very lovingly put together. There are five full CDs of stuff here. Uh, much more music than was ever put out on the Zappa New York stuff in there before. Now the booklet, um, aside from the pictures, has liner notes from Ruth Underwood and of course from the Vaultmeister himself, Joe Travers. And, oh my gosh, look at that. Sheet music. Ho, ho, ho. You gotta love it. Also, Ray White adds his 10 cents. And it all adds up to this thing being just one beautiful big thing of love. Now, is it still available? Let's check. It is still available. Last time I checked on Amazon, it was about 72 bucks for that box set. But you, you can, st I believe you may still be able to get the three record uh, vinyl set. And so that is release number 112, released on March 29th, 2019. The Zappa in New York, 40th anniversary deluxe edition. Now, if you are a subscriber of my videos, there's a good chance that you've already seen this. Yep, it's a three CD set that folds up like this. And it is the Orchestral Favorites 40th Anniversary Edition. Uh, came out on August the 30th, 2019, and it is release number 113. I did a comprehensive review of this 
previously. And if you want to find out more, I have a link in the show notes <laughs> underneath this video. So check out the description. Uh, you'll see the link to that video and you can find out more about that. But um, very, very worthwhile if you are even slightly interested in Frank Zappa's orchestral work. And uh, just some good music on here as well. Okay. Whew. That's a lot. I mean, we've got, uh, so, uh, let's see, seven discs for the Roxy performances. Then there's uh, five more for Zepp in New York. That's 12. 15 discs with, uh, with this, the, uh, with this. And, uh, then, oh yeah, there's a Halloween box set. But you know what? For that, I'm going to have to use my mind <clears throat> to zoom over to Prestige Media and get more information. Okay, we are back on location at Prestige Media with the lovely John Basso in the background <laughs> laughing. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next release is release number 114. Came out in 2019, Frank Zappa, Halloween, 1973. Now, this is a, th how many CDs are in here? One, two, three, four CDs. I believe there's uh, either four or three bo uh, shows on here, as well as excerpts from rehearsals of the band in 1973. And inside of this box, you will find, let's just dissect it here. Oh, there's the bottom of the box. This, I believe, is still in print. You might want to go on Amazon and see if you want it. All right, inside of this box, you have a Frank Zappa Halloween mask. Ooh, scary, boys and girls. You also have a couple of glo gloves. gloves or, or yeah, like monster gloves. Frankenstein. Frank oh, yeah, uh, Frank and Zappa or whatever. Oh, Frank and Zappa. And right. then at the very bottom, and I'm not going to take these out because there's kind of uh see in there, those are the actual cds all four cds inside of those little things in in there now that is all of that box and uh, they did also release a highlights cd set it's just one cd or two it's just one cd of halloween 1973 that came out as well so thank you for listening <laughs> oh, okay Whew. that took a lot of energy to just zoom over to uh, the Collinwood area and do that and then come back here mm. well that is still available for about 80 bucks if you want to just download the music you can get it for around 30 bucks on either Amazon or Apple Music <clears throat> so that is Halloween 1973, released on October the 25th, near Halloween, in 2019. That's a very busy year. So, that's a lot. And I'm so tired that uh, i got to take a rest and go put on a Zappa record. And um, number eight is coming. It'll be the last one of this series. But uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be more Zappa videos done down the way. Oh, no. I got plenty more stuff where that came from. So, had a great time. Hope you did, too. Go listen to some Frank Zappa. Subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed already. Hit the like button. You know all that jazz. Or is it really jazz? See you later. <laughs>